Hey, I've just finished doing a quick shot and I want to give you five tips for your macro photography. So macro photography is something I've been doing over the years and not as a particular genre, but it's just something which goes hand in hand specifically with food photography for me. Now, the first tip I'm gonna give you is probably the most important one and the one which most people just completely forget. Macro photography, in my opinion, isn't just about getting as close as you can to an object. I don't need to see another picture of moss backlit in some sort of flicker, Instagrammy sort of vibe. It's been done, it's finished. What macro photography should be about is telling a story, showing how something is, what it feels like, what, you know, it's just trying to open up another world to somebody. Now, macro photography, there are definitions of it, but I'm just gonna talk about anything where we're photographing it close rather than having some strict and stringent guides that it has to be one-to-one -one or whatever it may be. As far as I'm concerned, we're just talking about close-up photographs. Now, when it comes to choosing your subject today, I've chosen to photograph an octopus tentacle, and it's a, a baby octopus tentacle, so it looks big on the screen, but we've actually come in very close. Now, for me, what's important is telling the story. Now, in this particular instance, there's a few different things we need to do here. So I need to show the suction cups. I need to show the curvature of it. And this is more important than just being close. So if it is a photograph of moss you're doing, rather than just taking a picture of moss, find the right moss, find the best moss. And part of what I did today was choosing the best tentacle for my shot. So I had a whole jar of octopus tentacles, I sifted through them, pulled it out with tweezers, and I, I lined them all up and then found which one looks best for this application. And I think that's the most important tip. It's the context, the content, and exactly what you're trying to say with it, rather than just going, look how close I can focus the lens. So the second tip comes down to the styling. Now, in this particular instance with food, it seems very really obvious that you're gonna to have to style it. I used a paintbrush and some tweezers and a bit of dabbing, some Q-tips. And I also ended up using glycerin and water just to give that wet out of the sea look, even though it's clearly been pickled in a jar for the last year. As well as the styling of the actual item, so it could be that if you're photographing some speakers or a microphone that you're cleaning it, you also need to choose the setting and style the actual scene. Now I've used a sort of cake tin holder because it's so small, you don't need a huge backdrop. We don't need any particularly elaborate settings. You'd be amazed at what you have in your house, in your shed, in your garage, that would make a brilliant background for something like this. You'd never think of using a cake stand to photograph an octopus tentacle. But in this context, I think it works quite well. Now my third point is, and this is getting more into the technical aspect of it, a lot of macro lenses go down to f1.8, 2, 2.8, but when you're shooting that close up, depth of field is at a premium. Now, I don't ever think a macro shot looks that great when it's shot wide open. You just don't get the detail. I don't see the point in doing it. So you want to be at F10, F13. You'll still get that shallow depth of field just because you are so close. I'll pop a link in the description to the depth of field calculator. You can put all your numbers in there and it'll tell you how much we'll actually get in focus. Now, because of this, we're going to need a lot of light. And there's two ways we can do this. One is like I did, she's a big powerful flashlight, so I use a 500 watt flash on full power really close. And the other one is to use a long shutter speed. This obviously requires a tripod, don't try and use IS for long shutter speeds, but using a tripod, get up to five seconds, 10 seconds, whatever you need to get that depth of field so you get in the detail, and really capturing the object. And the next point comes about the lens. Now I'm using a macro lens, it's not a true one-to-one -one macro lens, I do have one of those, but I prefer this particular lens but any lens can be a macro lens with an extension tube. They are the cheapest way to get your camera as close as possible to the subject and to really be able to focus close. If you don't own a macro lens, I'll pop a link in the description. It'll probably be an affiliate link. It might not be, I've not found it yet, but it's, it's gonna be for an extension tube. Make sure it's the right one for your camera and your lens, but they're cheap. There's no optics involved. It's just quite literally a tube. And it'll bring that lens further away from the camera and it'll allow you to focus much closer. Now, don't go and buy the biggest extension tube you can find because you'll just be photographing a pinhead with one of those. Get a set of three so you can get into different sort of areas. They do a lot more than you expect them to. For a bit of metal about yay big, it suddenly makes your lens from focusing from one meter away to a centimeter away. And my last point is about the light. Now with macro photography, you don't need a huge space. I've got a huge studio obviously because it's what I do for my day job. But for this particular instance, I could have done it on a desk. You need some little bits of black card, white card, reflectors, 
little silver spoons. Maybe a dentist mirror is quite good for just bouncing that bit of light into that dark area. Remember, when we're doing macro photography, we're sculpting a scene. Yes, if you're photographing an insect on a tree, that's not going to happen. But if you're in a controlled environment like I am today, then really take your time to sculpt the light. Work out what you want to show. I've used some black cards to flag off one area to give more definition to the suckers. I've put a reflection card on the other side to bounce them into the little twisty tentacle bit. And all these little things, they make a difference. So you don't need expensive equipment. We're talking about paper from a, you know, your local stationery store. Head down there, get some black card, some white card, some tin foil, which you'll already have. If you don't have studio lighting, use a window, get a roll of tracing paper out. Really simple stuff. So this is the shot I took today. And the setup was really simple. It was just one big flash camera left, had the 100 millimeter lens pointing down at about a 45 degree angle, F10, F13, somewhere in that area, 100 ISO, as I always do. And then we've got a little bit of a flag just to stop the light going and washing completely over the subject. And it lets it more sort of fall and spill over. And then I've got a bounce card on the other side just to even it out a bit because we needed so much light that it had to come really close. But obviously with the old inverse square law, that meant the light disappears really quickly and the shadows become really dense. That sort of balances that out. I hope you found this interesting and useful. If you do, do hit subscribe. I'm putting out weekly videos like this, as well as my vlog, which sort of goes behind the scenes of what it's like to be a professional photographer. Thank you very much and I'll see you all next time.